Okay, hello everyone. My name is Laura Barciova and today I'm here with my colleague Tomáš Tomeček uh, and we will be speaking about the journey of iteration and uh, role rotation for better collaboration. Uh, so, um, we will have a little bit of interactive aspect in the beginning, so please um, try to scan the QR code or you can join uh, to menti.com and use the code you see and we'll start with some like very simple questions uh, and then we'll of course uh, provide our um, our feedback and our solution that works in our team. So the first question, hopefully really simple one, what are some repeating tasks in your team or project? Please you can be creative, so anything that pops to your mind, uh, anything that is repeating, yeah, releasing a project. Anything else you have? Okay, uh, we have sprint planning, regression testing, growing PTO. Yeah, a lot of really good ones. I wasn't expecting even this much. Okay, that's nice, so. Uh, and now let's move to the maybe a little bit more complicated question. Uh, so back to the tasks, uh, how do project member actually work on those? Like, again, uh, feel free to interpret this as you want. All together in a call, in Jira, collaboration, mm -hmm, individually. Okay, okay, um, interesting. Yeah, I would say that the answer silos, that's exactly why we are here. So we are gonna explore that further. And now I think the last one for the beginning. So do you have dedicated people responsible for some specific tasks? Okay, yes, looks like yes is winning for now. Okay, so mostly yes, but also some no's. Yeah, so I think we are in a good place um, and we can start with sharing our solution in our team. So I will pass it to Tomáš. Okay, thank you, Laura. So even though in the previous section it may look like that the yes had more answers than the no, it's, it's actually a bad thing because it means that if someone is dedicated uh, to doing something, it's like they're a single point of failure. So if they go for a vacation, suddenly like who is going to do that task if only Martin or Eva could do it very well. And this was a big problem in our team when we started Packet like five years ago. Uh, we started working on a service and service had all these uh, tasks that you listed earlier. So releasing it, deploying it, monitoring uh, how it's doing, uh, meetings, planning and all these things. So some of them we are doing pretty well and some of them, it was a real challenge. And like first thing, there was no transparency. So if the task wasn't even defined, like precisely, we didn't know like who is working on it. So for example, we were running the service in production and there was some alerts and say the service was degraded. Suddenly, uh, since no one was responsible for that, we didn't know like who is doing it, who is fixing it, how is fixing it. So we even had to start the first thing like, speak in the chat and say like, hey, we have some problem. Someone should look into it, like, but who is going to do it? So like the transparency, that was terrible. Also ad hoc assignments. So we had some people who are very good at releasing, taking care of stuff in OpenShift uh, or responding to people in chat. And some people like uh, were not doing it because usually they didn't know how because there was no process documented. There was no precise task. Uh, we are using agile methodologies, we are using Scrum, uh, we were pretty good at it, but these recurring tasks, such as paying attention to alerts, uh, like we didn't plan that in next sprint, I mean it was in every sprint, right? Uh, so it wasn't very well uh, defined and not documented at all. Uh, so you probably know these issues, I, I think you have them 
or you had them in your project. So we realized that we have a problem and we need to fix it somehow. So we started writing down all these tasks on these responsibilities and we had lots of them and we started grouping them into these roles. And this is a screenshot from our Jira back then and we had one Jira card, it was like maintain our project and it had all these subtasks, various roles and every role was like precisely defined. So we, so when someone got assigned, so for example here I'm assigned release packet, so I, I had a precise task list and documentation, everything I, I needed, I knew exactly what I need to do and then next week I would get something else. And it was really brilliant because not only I knew what I was supposed to be doing, but I also know what others are supposed to do. So for example, Laura is Scrum Master, so I know that she's uh, supposed to lead meetings. And for example, Hunor was CI Master, so if something was wrong with our CI system, our test would start failing for random reason, I know that Hunor would take care of it. And when I say uh, precisely defined, like this is one of the defi definitions. Uh, I can give you five seconds, go through it. And then, uh, trivia question, so which one do you think this is from the previous list? Pardon? Oh, yeah, 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 it's Scrum Master, perfect. So, uh, yeah, we started uh, with Scrum, with Jira, but then it evolved and Laura will guide us. Yeah, so the process that Tomas just uh, described, uh, it was really great, but I think uh, at the moment, like most of the team members would not even remember this uh, start uh, because like few years have passed and uh, the process has changed a lot. Uh, we did a lot of different iterations uh, and we will go through these points and I will describe it uh, in a little bit more detail. Uh, so Tomáš already mentioned that uh, we used to do Scrum, uh, but uh, during the time we somehow realized Scrum is not the best fit for us since uh, we didn't have the paying customers really or some strict deadlines. Uh, so we decided we will uh, try Kanban. Uh, and so with uh, Scrum we had the two-week sprints, uh, but with Kanban we didn't have anything like that. Uh, so we needed to uh, adjust the process a little bit. Like with Scrum, uh, each sprint we had uh, all of those roles you have already seen. Uh, but with Kanban, so we decided we will go with the weekly cadence uh, instead of the bi-weekly one. And uh, this also resulted in consolidating some of the roles. So one example was uh, previously they were uh, multiple of the releases, uh, releasing roles, but here we have just uh, one person uh, responsible for all the releases, so the packages that need to be released uh, in that week, uh, one person is responsible for that. Uh, then previously we had like for uh, each week a separate role for um, pushing uh, production images, but here we, uh, it was enough to have one. So this was the first quite big change. Uh, but the second one, even <laughs> bigger, was moving from uh, Jira to GitHub. So previously in uh, Jira we had these tasks uh, in some backlog and when we started moving uh, our projects uh, and uh, the issues to GitHub completely, uh, it was like, there was the question uh, where should we define the roles um, and it was for us quite straightforward to create a dedicated repository and have them there as a separate issues. Uh, with that, again, there comes some uh, renaming and everything became public. Uh, so we played uh, with the uh, role descriptions a little bit more. And uh, with moving to GitHub, uh, since we did this transition during our uh, week when everyone was together in the Brno office, we decided to do a little bit of hacking. So we automated the process even more. Uh, so previously, uh, the upcoming Kanban lead had to run the script uh, locally at his machine. And of course, uh, sometimes people forget about it. Uh, so we created actually GitHub Action and uh, now each Friday uh, the workflow is run. Uh, the 
uh, the script uh, is run. And then we are just notified via the GitHub notifications that, hey, you are a Scrum Master or like Kanban lead uh, the, the following week. And like we usually do on Monday, or we check uh, the roles. And of course, we discuss uh, whether there are needed some adjustments to the assignments. But it uh, works really perfectly. And then there is also the roles adjustments, like in general, the descriptions and so on. So now with the current uh, thing, how things are going, it is really simple to just edit the description of the GitHub issue uh, and make things up to date. Uh, so this process is really iterative. Things are changing and uh, some links are getting outdated. And this is very simple to just change it. And then the next week, the issues are cloned again with the uh, updated descriptions. OK, and now a quite important part uh, of this presentation are the benefits. So Tomáš was speaking in the beginning uh, about all, all the pain points. And uh, this uh, role rotation is solving a lot of those pain points. Uh, so. Of course, in the beginning, uh, a lot of team members, especially the more reserved ones or shy ones, were quite afraid of this change. But it was really nice to see the transformation uh, and how uh, different people could uh, start doing different tasks and touch things that they have never uh, did before. Um, and with that, uh, one example would be the uh, Scrum Master or later Kanban lead role. Uh, so like now the meetings are much more engaging and fun since each week we have someone else doing them. Uh, or another interesting example was uh, the community shepherd role. Uh, so it is so interesting to see how different people are using different communication styles. Um, yeah, and it's just so nice to see it. Uh, so uh, one benefit is definitely the enhanced transparency. So now we have the processes documented so much better uh, since everything is also public. Uh, the very important one, so uh, previously we mentioned there were uh, some uh, people uh, that like the tasks were heavily dependent on them. Uh, but now we have reduced it uh, quite a lot so people can go on vacation and we don't have to be afraid that something will break and we will not know what to do. Uh, and of course, also career growth opportunities. Uh, so as I mentioned, um, people can now touch tasks that probably they didn't have chance before. And uh, that also leads to uh, a lot of skills development, uh, also soft skills. Uh, and there is also the saving time aspect. So now everyone knows who is responsible for what. We don't have to uh, discuss these uh, things. Um, and yeah, so that were most of the benefits. Uh, and now I'll pass it to Tomáš, who will ask you some additional questions. OK, get your phones ready. So anyone would find this beneficial in your project? And OK, I can see lots of yes. So we have more good news for you. Uh, that you can actually try this fairly easily in your project, in your team, like you just need to persuade the team to do it. <laughs> uh, okay, thank you for the feedback. Uh, so for those of you that were not convinced still, uh, so do you see some drawbacks? I don't know, feel free to speak up or, or write it down. You'll have plenty of time. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I don't follow. Can you please repeat? Oh, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so the question is like, if tomorrow I will get a new role, like how will it scale? How will it work? Do you want to cover that or should I? So I would say the more important part is, is the description of the role, uh, as as we saw it uh, two times. One one was like very small picture, 
uh, that like every role has a precise description with links to documentation, how to, for example, do deployment, how to do releases, or for the community shepherd role, like which channels you should monitor and pay attention and, and reply to people. So, so the important part is when you get the role, you know exactly what uh, you should do, uh, what is expected of you, and like obviously the description is not perfect, but you have also the power to either ask people who have it, for example, last week, because they, they did it, they didn't have the best uh, experience, uh, so it's something unclear, you can ask them, and then you can improve the description so that for the next person, like the, it will already be fixed. And it was one of, one of those uh, screenshots that you could see the green part, that was what was changed and improved. Yeah, and maybe uh, if the question was um, focused more on like how to start with that, uh, we will have a slide following this one. So, yeah, uh, and I see. Yeah, okay, we have. Sorry? Yes, I see there are a lot of. Uh, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, for me that caught my eyes the different skill set, which yeah, that's definitely true, and I would say it was also a challenge for us. Like suddenly, for example, someone who was skilled in OpenShift and was doing all the deployments, and someone else didn't even touch it, uh, and then suddenly they were in charge of the deployment. So it definitely, I think, took some time to people. To, to learn it, so definitely some hands-on experience or even one-on-ones, uh, like providing in-depth documentation or, or like guidance how to do it. Uh, I think that was definitely the case for us. Uh, but over the time, I, I feel like that now everyone on the team can perform any role, which I, I, I think is truly amazing. Uh, yeah, and maybe also related ones I've seen, like uh, it's harder to become expert and not everyone is good at everything. Yeah, that's definitely true. But like one thing is you can definitely view this as an opportunity to learn new skills, which is really great. And yeah, from my experience, I was also definitely quite afraid in the beginning. Uh, but it helped me develop some of my skills. Uh, and... Um, yeah, a second thing I wanted to cover is that you don't really have to be an expert in everything. Uh, you just have to have at least the, like some baseline and like uh, do those things, but people can always help each other on the team. It's not that it is just on you. Uh, any comments from the, on the audience? Yeah, so, so the question is about the, I want to do roles that I like, not all roles, so like the pushback. Uh, yeah, I think that that's definitely true that some of the roles were more challenging than the other ones. Like literally one of the roles was almost no work for that week and some roles could easily be like even one day of work. So definitely agree with that. I, I would say at some point we even figure out how the script is doing the rotation so we could even somewhat cheat like we could swap roles and suddenly I knew what I, role I would have next week and it was the easy one. So, okay, that's probably not a good example. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, what, what, I, what I really, I would say grateful was that when there was something more challenging, people would either uh, like collaborate or help, help each other or even would willing swap roles. So for example, someone would be heading for a PTO and they couldn't do like this challenging role so people would swap and, and help each other. And, and I would say it's true to this day that even, uh, for example, in this PTO summer season, like some people have two or three roles because like that's, that's the responsibility of the whole team, like take care of the project, take care of the service, provide it. And yeah, sometimes there's not much bandwidth to do regular work. So maybe it's most of the times these roles taking care of the service. So yeah, I think it's really up to the team to handle it together. Yeah, and uh, just to add, I think it's also quite important to create the roles in a way, uh, we didn't do it probably in the beginning, but then we changed it, uh, that, so that they are like uh, of the same size or like at least similar size, 
uh, so that it doesn't hap happen that uh, one people will be doing like uh, one, just one day from the week will be dedicated for his tasks for the role and then uh, some other role it will like uh, require maybe five minutes of his time. So I think that's quite important to have uh, these roles to be of a similar size. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point. And we probably didn't mention it too much, uh, but we, they evolved a lot like over the years. I think we are using for like four years and it, it changed a, a lot. I mean, in the beginning, they were pretty basic, but over the time when we started to be comfortable with this framework, we started to be very creative. Uh, any more questions from the audience? Oh, Lukash? Uh, yeah, so the question is uh, that some roles are unpredictable, that could be outages, and it might be much more work than expected. Yes, that's true. Uh, I would say what really works well is you can ask for help in the team, say that there's an outage, please someone take care of this, I'll take care of that, and someone can handle communication. So it's it's perfectly fine, like if there's an outage, like that's, I know that's uh, like a situation, so all the team should really react and, and help with that. Uh, do you have something more else to add? Uh, there was another question. Oh, Clement. Yeah, uh, the question is about the changes we've done over the years from Scrum to Kanban and how we were uh, having the conversation. Oh. Okay, uh, so do you remember, Laura? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I remember. Uh, I have a few points like, like that are related. Uh, so we are and we have been like quite... Uh, not a big team, so it was always probably an advantage. Uh, and usually, like, uh, we try to remind each other uh, that we should speak up if some something is not working uh, in general. And so we have the retrospective meetings. And I would say those were a really great base, like, where to cover those things. So uh, when there was any problem or, like, anything missing, um, like, really anything, we usually discuss those uh, at the retrospectives and uh, we are probably lucky and we were always like able to find some consensus and um, go through those changes quite efficiently. Yeah, yeah, that's a very good point that the retrospective was usually the driver for changes. And I would say it was also like up to the team members that, for example, the transition from Scrum to Kanban like Hunar initiated that, that he was frustrated that we are spending so much time on the process in Scrum and we are not getting any benefits, that maybe we should try something more simpler. So he started to be more vocal, researched Kanban and said like, hey, let's give it a shot. So so we did and it was amazing. But it's true that some of the conversations were, were hard, like when some people like this, other people like that. So we always had to find some compromise. Uh, okay, any, okay. Uh, yeah, sorry, sorry, we, we don't follow the Is the question that uh, like it takes eight weeks to get uh, the same role again? No, it's that the same people mm. have the same activities. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they are Mm-hmm.
Oh, okay, now, now I get it. So, so, so the question is, if there would be a task that the person wanted to do that was outside of scope of the role, like it would take more than the week, like how did we handle it? Uh, I would say we usually created a card. I mean, we put it in the backlog, prioritized it properly, and, and assigned it as a, a true agile task. Like like these roles, they were pretty much outside of the uh, our normal agile practices, planning and, and grooming on these things. So it was something bigger. We would always create a card. I would say even from uh, uh, what's it called at the at the end of, of the sprint. Uh, yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> so at the rest perspective, you would usually have like many action items that were uh, become cards and we would groom them properly, I think. Okay, we have five minutes left, so let's continue with the slides. <laughs> or was there another question? There are a few others, but we're oh, okay. Uh, okay, so yeah, so let's steamroll the slides and if you are not. Uh, okay, so, uh, one of the things we actually did, we created a series of blog posts about this. So if you didn't catch something, uh, we have three blog posts covering this in detail. And last feedback when we did this presentation was create a step-by-step -step tutorial. So if you want to try, there is probably uh, this is the easiest way. Uh, and yeah, uh, another probably final uh, of these uh, feedback slides is if you are using something else in your team that works for you. <laughs> okay, working solo, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah thank, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so. Okay, uh, let's, I think this is the final slide. So like a very quick summary. So we spoke about how this role rotation technique can help you in your team. If you have some repetitive tasks and you can share them, share the responsibility in your whole team. It doesn't need to wait on like only some people's shoulders. Yeah, there's definitely room for improvement. I mean, we can still automate it more. <laughs> it's still not perfect. Uh, and we uh, like everything, what you saw, the final solution is completely public. Like you can see right now who has which role it's in the uh, our GitHub organization, and we even have a specific documentation for for this, and with links to all the uh, all the blog posts and, and the tutorial. So feel free to uh, look into it and, and reach out. We are happy to talk about this, and yeah, we can go to Q and A. Which we already kind of tried to start. <laughs> Lukash. Oh, Lukash is asking about disadvantages. I, I think we kind of discussed them that, for example, like not everyone is good at, I know, Python or RPM packaging. Like they need to learn something new and it's true that some people might not want to learn it. So uh, it could be a challenge for them. So luckily we, di we didn't have this problem. Every team member was willing to uh, like learn all the processes and all the te uh, technologies we were using. So I'd say that that's definitely, uh, one of those like disadvantages or challenges. And I would just add it more of a challenge, not a disadvantages, uh, that it really takes some time uh, and the dedication from all the team members to do something like this, like to start with the change. Uh, so it requires the time. So did you observe some inefficiencies at at least at first? Okay, I don't have such good memory, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I think definitely uh, yes, or like at the beginning since some people uh, are the ones that have the knowledge, uh, so it took time to learn new things uh, for the other ones. Uh, and yeah, then the community master also being in the chat, uh, just one person, we are not used to that. So maybe multiple different uh, people on the team were answering one question and like those things. Do you all work in the same time zone or even office? Uh, yeah, that can be 
probably relevant and uh, yeah we are all working from the same time zone but mostly uh, remotely so uh, not in the same office but like we try to meet at least like once a week or we see each other from time to time. I would say like the second question about the time zone that's actually the problem because for those roles that was about like look at the alerts like take babysit the service like suddenly when we are all the same time zone and we go home like who is going to take care of that we didn't have any pager duty or anything like that so like usually in the morning someone would realize that oh the service isn't working for six hours like we should fix it <laughs> so yeah that was definitely a challenge and i would be curious like if we would spread over the globe like how would we design the roles like maybe some handover between the time zones or something like that uh, Third question is, did you gain over these past four years a new team member, how the onboarding went? Yeah, over the four years we, we had several new team members, some people left, and I, I don't remember any challenges. Yeah, I think um, it went quite good, like uh, we always introduced the new team members, this is how we work. and. Yeah, maybe. I don't remember whether there was any, like, uh, but maybe some new team members were, again, like, afraid of this kind of approach. Um, but there were, in the end, no problems. Yeah, yeah, I think so. So last new team member is Maya. And I remember, like, when she started, she, like, for example, the uh, Scrum Master role, like, there was a big challenge for her, like, like, being new on the team and suddenly start leading meetings. Yeah, that, that was challenging. Also, we didn't give her, like, initially the harder roles, like deploying the service or doing the releases. So I, I think we were swapping roles initially with her, like giving her the lighter ones and we would have the harder ones. But she, like, she really loved the challenge and I would say every week she tried something more harder and, in, like, after, like, a few weeks or even a month or two, she was comfortable doing everything. So that was really inspirational. And maybe, again, it was really nice uh, to see how quickly she uh, touched a lot of different things um, yeah, in early uh, beginning uh, on the new team. Yeah, agreed. Uh, any? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so the question is, uh, like, if some of the roles, uh, like, they didn't do it on time, so they would just leave it for the next week. Yeah, I would say release is definitely that we are trying release weekly, but, yeah, like, doing, uh, like, release, okay, like, doing deployments of service, that's very important because, like, it's live, but doing releases of packages, I mean, if we miss one week, I mean, it's not such a big deal, so definitely this slip, uh, S several times that like people forgot or uh, didn't have actually time so usually the two people like uh, the neighbors would just speak about like do you want to do it or should I do it like oh don't worry I'll do it in the more uh, like on Monday uh, any more questions okay thank you for joining us in Saturday <laughs>